Welcome back. We'll be looking at implicit differentiation today and how it differs a little from explicit differentiation, which we're used to. So let's, let's just take a look at, at what we mean by this. So if we have a function that is implicit, like say y squared equals x, we can see that the dependent variable is not alone on the left side like we would be used to. So I'll show you how to use implicit differentiation to solve this, and then we'll compare it to the explicit. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we have here. Let's go ahead and do the y squared equals x. We see that y is the dependent variable, uh, and x is the one that uh, is, is the independent. So <clears throat> when we take the derivative like this, we have to use something called the, the chain rule. So let, let's go ahead and take the first step. When, when we do this, we are not surprised to find 2y there because we're used to the rules. You know, the 2 comes down and then it's reduced there. Uh, but what some students are surprised to see is the application of the chain rule in this way. Uh, you will just have to get used to it. it. It's all very logical. We are not surprised when we take the derivative of x uh, here to get 1. That, that isn't surprising. Uh, the, the only thing that students generally at first uh, need to just remember is that we have to apply the chain rule to this because this is Im implicit there. So let's take the next step. It'll, it'll clear up momentarily. If, if it hasn't already. So we just need now to isolate that, which we do right here, okay? So we leave y prime on the left side, and we just take this 2y there and do simple little algebra, and we just take it to the other side. Now when that's done, what you see here is what we were looking for, okay? y prime is 1 divided by 2y. All right. Now let's let's take this from another approach real quick, more of the way that you would be used to. If you knew nothing of this implicit uh, differentiation, you would most likely go about it like this. You would try to isolate y and say that it's equal to the square root of x. And and that's a, a real simple thing. We we've done problems like that before, and you'd probably rearrange it into this form so that you could more easily take the derivative. So let's go ahead and do that. And you would end up with a y prime that was equal to this here. Okay. Now, you can see that that doesn't look exactly the same. But now let's, let's remember something. And we'll, we'll take this and a couple other things. I'll bring down this one. It'll be clear in just a second. All right. So here is the implicit form. And you see that I've changed that color. That's because I'm going to replace it with that right there. So when we do that, and we swing it in there, then you can see that the y prime here, this, is the same as that. It's because, well, what is y? Well, y, in this case, was the square root of x. So when we're doing that, you can see that we would get to the same place even if it doesn't at first moment look like it's the same thing when it really is. Now, there are cases where we will not be able to do this action like we did down here. Uh, there are times when the only way through uh, the problem is to use implicit differentiation uh, and other times, it is the simplest way to go forward. So you'll, you'll be able to decide yourselves which way you want to go. But, but sometimes, it is the only way to go. So you need to know how to do it and how to use the chain rule like we did up there to get to the solution. So we will be coming back with part two and part three. And when we do that, you'll see some more examples of why we need to do this and what a powerful tool it is. Okay, I'll see you next time.